The movie begins with two royal sisters named Elodie and Floria. The sisters are collecting wood as it's their duty to go back with them because their people are freezing. They decide to go back to their kingdom and share the wood with everyone they can. Clearly everyone is living below their means. The sisters go check on their father and as they walk in they see a strange woman from a flourishing kingdom seemingly agreeing on something before Elodie's knowledge. The lady looks at her and says she will do. As she leaves, she gives her father a letter and Elodie questions her father and asks what the meeting was about. Her father informs her that it's a proposal from the royals asking them for Elodie's hand, Elodie's father tries convincing her to agree because their kingdom is full of gold, but Elodie informs her she's not the type to chase after riches because her heart is too genuine to be bought. Her father reminds her that their kingdom is falling and their people are now victims to starvation. Elodie realizes she has no choice since all the burden is on her shoulders now. As the royals head off to the rich kingdom of Queen Isabel, they cruise on their ship and arrive to the glorious kingdom of Araya. They're welcomed by the green plantations in the area, as they get there they're accompanied inside the kingdom, they're led to Elodie's room to await the prince. In the evening, Elodie is anxious about meeting him, she goes out to her balcony and sees what looks like people walking up the mountains. She thinks it's strange and soon Floria walks up behind her and tells her she can't sleep. She joins her in bed and calms her down into a deep sleep. The next day, the royals of Araya arrive, Prince Henry and Elodie finally meet and introduce themselves, Queen Isabel suggests the two to get to know each other, they walk off and Elodie questions Henry about what he thinks of her, the prince dances around her question and it's clear to Elodie her happiness doesn't matter as she's doing all this to feed her kingdom. Henry changes the topic and talks about her letter, he tells her what she's presenting isn't what he read from her letter, she laughs and says her family wrote most of what's in that paper. Elodie asks to ride his horses through the fields, Henry agrees and they ride off, he's surprised by how great of a rider she is, Elodie tells him he learned how to ride from her biological mother. Elsewhere, Elodie's stepmother asks the king about how the meeting went. He tells her the queen provided him with more gold than they agreed on but the king is bothered about something and refuses to discuss at the moment. Later on, the royals prepare the wedding, Lady Bayford tries to help but the queen is rude to her and reminds her she's not really of royal blood but she married a king, shocked to hear this. The queen tells her she's only doing all of this to marry her stepdaughter in their family, nothing more and nothing less. Lady Bayford rushes to Elodie's room and tries to convince her they're in a wrong place, Elodie and her sister refuse to listen to her because clearly her mind is made up. The next day, Elodie is getting dressed by the Queen's assistance and walks to Prince Henry, they officially marry in front of the two royals and everyone congratulates the two unions, Elodie wishes her family a good journey as she's off to finish the ceremony with Prince Henry, she asks him where exactly are they going, Henry lies and says they're paying their respect to his ancestors, as she gets there she sees a group of masked people and the queen walks them to the center of the mountain. The queen cuts the prince and Elodie's hands and force them to touch each other and let their blood mix. Henry is forced to pick Elodie up and throw her down the hole. She screams in fear and confusion as she falls down the hole. A couple of minutes later, she wakes up from subconsciousness and screams for help but it's clear she's all alone in the dark, she gets emotional remembering her stepmother's words, she hears sounds and see a light down a tunnel. As she carefully approaches to see what it is, she sees a small bird on fire, she quickly tries extinguishing the flames but she's too late as the little bird takes its last breath on her hands. A few minutes later, the tunnel gets filled with a swarm of birds on fire, she's shocked to see this and questions herself to what's going on, she hears a growl somewhere in the dark and as she turns back she sees a dragon, she quickly hides herself, the dragon questions her and asks what her name is, she tells it her name is Elodie, the dragon tells her every generation her kind must pay. The dragon tells her she can smell her because it has come familiar with the scent of her blood. As the dragon gets ready to attack her, Elodie quickly gets away as the dragon's flames follow her inside the tunnel. She sees someone unalive and she quickly gets away before she's burnt. Unfortunately her leg suffers from the burn, she cuts her dress and closes her wound. She decides to look for a way out of the place and explores the small tunnels. She sees lights from afar and slowly approaches. She stands under the lights, as she checks what they are, she realizes they're insects. She takes a few from the wall and walks up to drink the water from an iceberg, a few minutes into standing under the ice, she notices how fast the ice is dripping, only to see the ice quickly melting because of the dragon getting through, she quickly hides herself in a smaller tunnel and gets away from the dragon, as she walks around, she sees writings from the other girls who were thrown in the hole to be unalived by the dragon, she gets emotional as she realizes she's next. She decides to have a rest and a few minutes later, 
She's woken up by the insects she collected, she tries pulling them away from her open wounds but it's clear to her they have healing components in them and puts them back on her wound. Later on, she explores the tunnels again, as she walks through them she hears sounds coming from afar, as she approaches she sees crystals covering the way out, she decides to find a way out by making a rope and covering her feet with her dress, as she climbs, she gets closer and closer only for the dragon to see her. As Elodie tries her best in getting away she finally gets to a much safer tunnel, as she thinks she's finally out, only to be somewhere high in the mountain, she breaks down as all of her efforts are in vain. She hears someone calling her in the mountains, only for it to be her father looking for her, he tells his men to scatter around and look for her, Elodie carefully walks to their noise and sees the dragon's offspring unalived, she realizes that the dragon is paying revenge of what the first king did to her offspring, she remembers a folktale she heard of the king offering his daughters in exchange for his life. Somewhere in the mountains, the men keep calling for her and a few minutes later the dragon takes its first victim. The other soldier tries his best getting away but he's too slow for the dragon not to catch, the dragon asks the king why is he here, he tells it he's here for his daughter, as he's about to attack, the king is easily stopped and tossed on the ground, the dragon demands the king to call her, he realizes she's still alive and apologizes to Elodie for trading her for riches and gold, he orders her to never come out no matter what, the dragon gets annoyed and causes the king so much pain by piercing through his armor. Elodie can't take hearing the screams of her father and screams for the dragon to stop, the dragon stops and tries looking for Elodie as she hides herself even more, it hears one of the men from afar and decides to quickly fly there and investigate the noise, Elodie sneaks to her father and he begs for her forgiveness again before taking his last breath. Elodie decides to climb out of the mountain and unfortunately, she's heard by the dragon, it rushes to her and tries burning her but luckily Elodie gets out in time and rides off with her father's horse. The dragon is hot behind her trail and she decides to quickly hide herself under rocks while the horse runs off, the dragon unalives the horse mistaking it as Elodie, as it realizes she wasn't on it, the dragon fires in the sky as the agreement is broken between the dragon and the royals. Queen Isabel sees this and decides to go get Elodie's younger sister, her and her men attack their guards and take Floria away leaving Lady Bayford wounded trying to protect her. The following day, Lady Bayford rides her horse to the mountains and to her surprise, she reunites with Elodie, she tells her she's getting in the mountain to get Floria, Elodie refuses and says she's going to get her herself. Elsewhere, Floria gets thrown in the hole and Elodie gets there minutes later, she hears her screams and quickly gets down, she runs through the tunnels as she's experienced with the ins and outs of the place, she readies herself for war with the dragon and lies a trap for it. A few moments later, her trap works and gets the dragon to go investigate where the noise is coming from, leaving Floria alone. Elodie rushes to her sister and tries getting her up, she screams in pain and tells her to hide, as she's going to confront the dragon. Elodie tries convincing the dragon that they were both lied to, the dragon doesn't believe her because it smells the royal blood in her and attacks her, Elodie stabs it in the mouth before being burnt and falls down the water, as she gets out she tries getting away and the dragon pierces its long sharp nail in her. Elodie pulls out her knife and stabs it in the eye forcing it to let her go. As she gets up, she runs through the dragon and pierces her father's sword in its chest, the dragon tosses her away, as it approaches her to finish her off, Elodie has an idea and walks towards a curve wall, as the dragon blows its fire on her she jumps away and the fire reflects on it, the dragon screams in pain and falls to the ground. Elodie crawls to her sword and slowly approaches the dragon, she shows it her wound and tells the dragon they were cut along with the other girls and had their blood mixed with theirs. She tells it the royals fooled it, the dragon tells her to end her already, but Elodie refuses and goes to the lake of the healing insects, she takes some and puts them on the wounds of the dragon. Elsewhere, the royals continue with their ritual but Elodie quickly walks up and tells the lady to take her family and get away from here, everyone runs off but the royals, the queen insults her and the dragon appears behind Elodie, as Elodie walks off it blows its fire on the royals and destroys the whole kingdom. The dragon and Elodie get away together as their mission is now complete. Make sure to like and subscribe for more notifications. Until next time, see you soon.